The following program is being brought to you on the World Talk Radio Network. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit worldtalkradio.com. The World Talk Radio Network, where the world comes to talk. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the World Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. It's time to hear from those who have faced adversity and accomplished greatness. Welcome to Breaking the Limits with host Laika Sean. Your past does not dictate your future. This program will inspire and motivate you. Now here's your host, Laika Sean. Hello everyone and welcome to Breaking the Limits. Tonight I have the honor of introducing to you Mike McCleary, who is a co-founder of Beacon Media, and I also had the honor of being actually in a recent film production of yours, Mike. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Laika, for having me. Um, let, let people know a little bit about who you are. Um, and I have you down as a self-made film producer, um, and the, the um, movie that you produce is Anything But Ordinary, and Anything But Ordinary Journey. Um, basically, if you'd like to go ahead, and th- this just came out recently, but this has been a long-term journey for you. Talk about stamina. You've been working on this film pretty much on your own for, f- what is it, four years? Since four you years. came out yep. to Atlanta? Mm-hmm. So um, I believe the, the best way, I'm going to read some of this off of your, your information you sent me so I'm clear on explaining what the movie's about. It's uh, the journey weaves a story shared by you and those you've interviewed, myself among them, about being successful simply by living a passionate life of doing what you love. So would you like to go ahead and share with, in your own words about making this movie anything but ordinary? Um, sure, definitely. I mean, it's, it, it's, like you said, it's been a long journey. It's been four years. We originally started, um, started out to make a TV show um, for PBS, my not having any budget whatsoever for this uh, production or really very much video experience. I had just gotten into uh, starting a video production company with, with one of my best friends who did have video background, but I myself didn't, and uh, just had this idea one day to create this TV show, and I knew it was something that I had to do, and so I went out and just started working towards um, this dream I had of creating a TV show that would inspire people to live a life that they are passionate about and really answer some some questions about the meaning of life, in essence. And and so that went on for, like I said, I interviewed 20 different people over the course of um, four years. And um, what we came to was the best way we thought to get it out there originally into the marketplace was through doing a documentary film. And so that's how we've approached it initially is, is this film. My director, Casey Turner, is amazing. He spent over four months this summer, um, 100% dedicated to editing this film and getting it out there. So it's really exciting. It's been a long journey, but uh, we're, uh, we're making a difference, and I'm excited about that. Well, talk about perseverance. I mean, most people, you know, they have an idea, but they can't last <laughs> the first four months, let alone four years, putting something together like this. Now, I understand you kind of started out in corporate America. Um, would you like to tell the audience a little about, about who you are, where you originally came from, and how you ended up where you are today? Sure. I well, I guess I can go back. Uh, go back about a decade. I went to uh, Kettering University, which used to be GMI in Flint, Michigan. Um, it's a fully cooperative university, so it's really cool. You get to work for a company for three months, and you go to school for three months. And so, I worked in a number of uh, corporations um, after I got out of college, uh, ranging from some really large companies to um, some smaller companies. I just found um, I was never satisfied wherever I was at. I was always um, I always get frustrated, and it was usually never a problem with the company itself. Um, but I would just become bored, and I think a lot of people go through this. They get they get oh, tired yeah. of what they're doing. Uh, they don't feel like it matters, and they don't know where they're going with their life. And so I skipped around a few different companies, and um, finally got to the point where I was almost suicidal. I just couldn't oh. take the corporate corporate life anymore. And uh, what I discovered, though, was after being medicated for about six months, realizing I didn't want to live the rest of my life on, on medicine, you know, of not being, of being happy or sad, of coming home and, and not being very nice to my wife and kids and not being happy. 
So I realized, you know, I really needed to make a change in my life. And so I knew I always wanted to start a business. Uh, I knew um, my friend Casey was, was looking for, you know, I think someone to work with him. And so we started this company. I left my corporate job with no real experience, no clients, um, nothing, and started a video production company. How did you and get over that? That's a, quite a fear factor to get over there, to jump ship like that and into the brave, the unknown that way. How, wh- what gave you the uh, impetus to suddenly just go ahead and full so- stream ahead doing something like that, which most people would, <laughs> they would stay, stay stuck going, you know, I hate my job, but at least I have a paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I got to the point where I just had to make a change. It, it, it got to the point where um, something had to be different, something had to change, and I felt it was my opportunity. You know, I was still young. Um, I'm still pretty young, still but, young. <laughs> you know, I, I felt like at the time that uh, this was my chance. If I wanted to start a business, you know, why not do it now? I didn't want to get too, you know, set in a certain place and feel like I have this really large paycheck and I can't, you know, handle not uh, making a certain amount of money. And so, uh, like what I said, when I had to change something about what I was doing, I knew I had to change it. And so I think a lot of people go through um, periods in their life, you know, we make changes when the pain gets really great. And you we say just, you have to have time to anymore. hit that whole philosophy, sort of hit rock bottom, and it's yeah. as painful to stay where you are as it is to, to face the fear and make the change. Exactly, exactly. And and what's what's interesting about it too is I think most people wouldn't have even realized it. I mean, I kept pretty much everything everything inside. I really wasn't sharing that that was an issue, um, but uh, but inside it was eating me up. And so, uh, I, thankfully, I had a family that was incredibly supportive. I had a wife that was very supportive of what I was doing jumping into the unknown and uh um we went for it and it's been it's been a it's been a great ride i mean i, so you I must have been on the road i wouldn't go back even when times are difficult you must have just been on the road for quite a bit doing this um how did you you just were you what was that like i mean you must you have a picture of you driving that car in, in the movie mm-hmm. and and uh you've been tra- you traveled all over the country to do this so did you just live like hotel hotel or did you take breaks and go back home and then start up again or how did how did that work how did you pick who you went to see <laughs> <laughs> okay, which one? Which, where I, do guess, we yeah, I just start? have a lot of questions. Let, let me start a little more slowly. First of all, why don't I ask, how did you come up with the idea of anything but ordinary to begin with? Sure. Um, you know, honestly, I, I woke up one morning with the idea, and um, and I just knew it was what I was supposed to do. Um, I, I really honestly believe there was a there was divine intervention in, in what happened, that I was doing what I was supposed to do, because I simply woke up, and felt that this was just, I just had this idea. I mean, everything was sketched out in front of me what, what I should do. And, uh, and so that's really kind of where the idea germinated and started. Um, I always have enjoyed interviewing people. When I, going back to my days in college, when I would go around to different departments at the company that I worked for, I always interviewed all the executives in the company. I wanted to find out what made them successful and what I could learn. And so I've always had this desire to go out and interview and talk to people but I wanted to do a, a TV show that wasn't just about all the super high-profile, super successful people that you always see. You know, when someone who's got a lot of money says, you know what, you can make a lot of money and be just like me, I think most people kind of say, yeah, that worked great for you, but how does, that, how does that affect my life? I'm just someone who is working in an automotive plant or, you know, I'm working at McDonald's right now and you're saying I can be super wealthy. So I wanted to find people who were, who were just like everyone else, but the difference was that they had a passion, that they were happy with their life, and they came from a variety of different professions. And so that's, that's really the genesis of where we started to look for, um, for different people. And really I, looked, I found people online. Um, people suggested different individuals to me. Um, and sometimes we would just be very lucky. I would meet someone um, at a conference or something and go, this is a great person to interview, and I would just take it on faith that that was someone that I would interview. And so we would set up an interview. So we, we did this, like I said, um, going into your question about how long, uh, for four years, and it was worked around times when I could travel. Sometimes when i go on vacation, like to Florida, we'd find people in Florida to go interview, and I'd take three days off from my vacation and go do that. So um, it, it wasn't a constant traveling to get all the people but there was, there was a good amount of travel uh, to go with it, and, and it's been a lot of fun. 
So did you still work at all, your your job at all, while you were doing this, or were you just up in the air doing this all, just up and quit and said, hey, boss, I'm gone, I'm out of here, and, and leave leave the office? Well, my my former employers were great because they said, um, you know, we'll give you some time to transition, um, and I think it was probably good for them, too, that I didn't just up and leave either. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, really, the whole beginning was starting the video production company, and so we were still, when we started that, the idea from anything but ordinary came a few months into that. So we were um, um, putting together videos and, and uh, websites and graphic designs for different companies, and this is what we I still do primarily for a living. So we would work around these different projects while also doing work for the movie. And so it worked out great because as my own boss then, I could schedule the projects and I could schedule time for the interviews and, and work them all in together. So, a little so it worked out perfectly. There, yeah. <laughs> So did you ever hit, you know, you're going through this, this amazing process for four years. Did you ever, what kept you going when you, did you hit that wall where you would go, oh, what am I doing? Or, you know, people often, they start something and then they hit that wall. They're going, oh, I, need, I don't know. And people are, people are going, what are you doing? Are you nuts? Are you crazy? Um, did you have a lot of support from everybody? Sounds like your family was great around that. Did you run into that? Or did people look at you funny? Or <laughs> did you have a lot of support from everybody that you met? You know, I had a lot of support from a lot of people I met, and I was very lucky for that. I know a lot of people have dreams and goals. Um, I, like in our interview, I know you, you know you talk about being a black belt dreamer and being able to, um, you know, protect your dream and not let it get snuffed out. And I was lucky. I had a lot of people who said, you know, go for it. We support you. Um, you know, what can we do to help? And even the people that I contacted to interview, everybody just loved the idea and and wanted to be involved. I mean, there were some people that weren't, but, I mean, the majority were very supportive. And at least most of the people who probably didn't think what I was doing was that great of an idea at least didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so, they can I mean, I know there were those people, but at least they didn't tell me. If you don't so, have something um, good to say, don't say anything at all, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, and there were difficult times. I mean, there's times, you know, you're running a business and, and not knowing exactly what you're doing. You know, there were times that financially things were really bad, you know, but, but I had the faith to know that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, and, and that helped me get through. Yeah, I can I can imagine that. That would be kind of tough. Um, I understand that you are actually thinking of coming out with a book. Um, yeah. Is that going to be around the movie, or do you want to talk a little bit about the, that, what that's going to be? Sure. The, the book is... Um, it's going to come out hopefully sometime next year. What we're doing right now is uh, my co- co-author, Tina Bomarito, who's a friend of mine actually all the way back to high school, is my co-author, and we're currently working on uh, putting together a, a large book proposal to get, uh, hopefully, a large publishing house. And if anybody's listening, get a hold of me. <laughs> They're interested. Publishers out there, listen up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, we're looking to put together a proposal to get it uh, to get it published. And if it's... Um, if we have to self-publish it, we'll do that too. But really, it's it's a more uh, detailed look at the 20 different people we interviewed, as well as more intimate look at what I went through in producing um, and creating the movie, and also what people can learn, you know, from this entire experience. So you would actually have like segments for each of the, each of the individuals telling their story, sort of like a a conglomerate of different stories um, sewn together through your journey. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's really kind of the, the the basis of the movie. You know, the movie is really it's based around. We had twenty interviews. We were able to go in depth with nine of the interviews are included in the movie, and then um, uh, everybody else. We have you know comments throughout the movie. Their thoughts on the different topics that we we go into, which are um, change, perseverance, faith, and success. And so it, it, it's really kind of oh, like that. I am sorry. There's a commercial break right coming up, but we will be yep. right back to finish this as soon as the commercial's over. Listen. Listen. The world is talking. The World Talk Radio Variety Channel. Your past does not dictate your future. Learn where this powerful message came from by picking up a copy of the inspirational book, 
Firewalker, written by author, speaker, and talk show host, Laika Sean. Firewalker chronicles Laika's experiences raised in the deep woods of Maine by a Czech immigrant who claimed to be touched by the hand of God and her journey to overcoming the fear and self-doubt that was thrust upon her for years. Pick up your copy of Firewalker now at BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. That's BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. Champions are born and losers are made. This is a powerful statement made by one of the world's top motivational speakers, John D. Lemmy. Clinically diagnosed as a stutterer at a young age, he was told he would never speak fluently, and yet, now, he is a world-renowned motivational speaker. Get the resources now you need in order to stay on top of your game. John D. Lemmy is giving away for free seven success motivational teachings. Go to www.selfempowermentsystems.com. That's www.selfempowermentsystems.com. You're listening to the World Talk Radio Variety Channel. You are listening to Breaking the Limits. Your past does not dictate your future with Like a Sean. What would you do if you could overcome any obstacle in your life? Let's get back to today's exciting discussion. Here's Like a Sean. Hi, and welcome back to Breaking the Limits with our guest, Mike McCleary. Um, We are talking about his movie, Anything But Ordinary, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Lives. Now, we were just discussing uh, more about your book before the commercial break, and it kind of got cut into a little bit there, so I wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything on that. You were talking about how the book was going to be a basically a print version of discussing the 20 people's different stories that you interviewed. Um, Did you want to talk a little bit more about that? I think we got cut off a little there. Oh yeah, sure. And and um, you know, really, like I said, it's it's about going a lot more in depth about these different people because they're they're just fascinating individuals. We interviewed people in in Canada, Michigan, um, Virginia, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia area, as well as Florida, and we just uh, and people from LA who were also out in these different areas when we interviewed them. So we have just all these different people, and they all have great stories. There's uh, doctors and, and musicians and actors and speakers and entrepreneurs. And there's just all these different um, different fascinating people who have these really interesting stories. And so um, the book will really go into it. But I think hopefully, you know, our goal really too is to to share some some thoughts and ideas. Not necessarily a ten step step process to success, um, but some things that you can do. You know, to look at your life and go. What am I passionate about? What is it that I'm supposed to do with my life? What, what uh, am I here to give back? And if you don't know, you know, some ways that you can you can work on it and find out what those things are that you want to do. One of the things that when I was uh, watching the movie, and for those that don't know, I was actually one of the people interviewed in the movie, so that was a lot of fun for me. And one of my good friends, Chris Gloss, that actually did the, his interview and my interview at my home um, here in Atlanta, which was a lot of fun as well. Um, one of the things when looking through it is you get different perspectives. It's, it's funny how you, if you look at the same scenario, the same situation from different someone else's viewpoint, you kind of get, can get an aha moment where you see a whole different vantage point to what was a narrow view before. Um, what, that's one of the things that I kind of came away with. What are some of the comments and reactions you got from people at the premiere of your movie that you got to talk to face-to-face? What, was, what did you see happening to the people watching this event? Well, I think you know definitely that's one of the things is there there are these aha moments and and really that's that was our goal. I mean, our goal was to challenge people to look at the way they they think in a different way, and um, and we had we had people who all over the board. I mean, some people were really excited about the movie, and some people were frustrated because they started to ask questions about themselves that maybe were difficult to ask. Um, and, and we had people who wanted to make a change in their life. I, one of the great stories is. Um, uh, Casey Turner, who was our director, you know, thought it'd be a great idea to give um, give tickets away to a local homeless shelter that was near our first premiere in Michigan. Oh wow! And so, yeah, it was a great idea. And he talked to the talked to the group, and we ended up giving them ten tickets. They felt ten people would come. And after the movie, one of the gentlemen who was from the shelter stopped and told me that he was going to number one that he appreciated just us inviting them to come, but also that. He was when he went back to the shelter that night. He was going to look at and examine everything in his life that he needed to change and write out a plan to change it. And so, 
when someone has a story like that and tells you it made a major difference in their life, you know, someone who's been, who's lost everything, um, I mean, that's just, that's just amazing to know that, you know, you're having an impact like that. We wow. had other people who said they looked at success in an entirely different, different way. You know, they lived, you know, 40 years of their life just thinking success was money and the stuff they got and, and things like that. And they looked at it and went, you know, success is so much more than that. Um, we, we really had an opportunity to impact people. And that's, again, like you said, one of the things I love about the movie, um, not just the two to throw a horn, but uh, Casey did an awesome job of editing it, putting it together. But then it gives you different perspectives on these these questions, these age old questions of what does it mean to be to be us and to live a life that we love to live. So it, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great journey. You can you know, definitely hear the passion in your voice when you talk about it. it. Sounds you can feel how exciting it was for you to get this this done. Um, oh, yeah. Also, it'd be <laughs> interesting just to see you know go back to that person that you impacted here a few years and see what happened with their life. Maybe they'll be your next story. You never know. No, oh yeah, that would, that would be awesome. That, that would be um, that would be great. Just you know, follow up. Where are they? Now? Not where are they now? That's kind of cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of our ideas eventually is to do with all of our guests is to do a where are they now? So five years or ten oh. years down the road, we want to go back and interview all of you. You know, so like us, be ready. Well, about my show I will now, be interviewing so. you again. <laughs> now I'm interviewing you. <laughs> and vice versa, exactly. But to, to show people, you know how. How things change, how our life changes over time, and what stays the same. Yeah, um, I, that's, that's definitely an interesting way to look at it. Uh, also, I know I'm going to be getting a chance to interview Candy G too, and she was one of the people on your anything but ordinary journey. And it would be a lot of fun to hear some of the stories about the people you interviewed, apart from myself, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you want to, to talk a little bit about like her and some of the other? people um, that you got a chance to get to know better. You probably really expanded your circle of, of friends this way, too. Oh, definitely. And, we, you know, I had an opportunity to um, to meet people that I probably never would have met before and really develop friendships. What's so been great about this whole process is really, you know, to develop friendships with all these different people. Um, you know, one of the people that I originally interviewed, and it just goes to show you that if, if you really are willing to make a committed step of action, that things can things can change and go positively in your in your way. Is One of the people we interviewed was Richard Hatch, who was um, the star of the original Battlestar Galactica. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a sci-fi actor, um, does a lot of promotion and work that way. Well, I've always been a fan of his since I was young. I watched the original Battlestar Galactica. I did, too. I so, see, we're both in the same. <laughs> you know, love, love the show. I've always been a fan and followed him. And, in fact, his desire to bring back show back um, was one of that inspired me to do this movie. So a friend of mine online, as someone who I've never met in person, who was online, knew about the project I was working on, and said, well, I'm going to be at a convention that he's at in Vancouver, you know, do you mind if I tell him about your project? And I said, sure, <laughs> you know, great. So she went and talked to him, and he loved the idea, and um, said, well, here's my personal contact information, have Mike call me, wow. you know, if he's interested. And so we developed a friendship through that entire process and got a chance to interview him, but it really showed me that, you know, if you, if you really want to do something things will open up. They'll give you an opportunity to do it. And most people um, really do want to help. Uh, if they can find a way to help you, they'll do it. And uh, and it was really a great experience to just see see that happen with so many different other people that we interviewed as well and how things would just pop up uh, the way they did. And the way the stories have all gone together, you'd think we planned them out to have this, this core storyline that goes through, but, but we didn't. It just worked out that way. And, and so you um, it was amazing. It was definitely really well put together. And uh, I know my mom's a big fan of yours now. <laughs> 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 and I'm waiting to get a CD version for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, moms are always good. <laughs> moms are always good, usually. Always good. <laughs> usually. I feel like usually most people's moms are. <laughs> so. so, actually, um, one of the things that I found interesting is... Um, I had almost kind of forgotten because I mean, it it four years is a long stretch, right? Mm-hmm. So you you mm-hmm. came out and you interviewed me, and I thought that was that was really super cool, and I got along with my life and got busy. And next thing, it seems like the next thing I knew, suddenly this this movie was premiering, and I was I was in this movie and it was premiering, and I was I was all jazz. I was like, wow, he finished it. He yeah, he really really did it. Um, <laughs> and it it just amazed me the amount of stamina you have to push through 
and get it done over such a long period of time and, and meet all these people. And one of the things I found happening to me is a, a kind of a full circle type of thing happening where some mm-hmm. of the people that I had met those four years ago, I started reacquainting with. It's like um, your movie kind of was a, a, a linchpin. It, it, it kind of pulled together by, uh, a bunch of my acquaintances. Then I started getting back into contact with Chris Gloss, and he's mm-hmm. good friends with John Delemi, who is now my coach. Mm-hmm. And who I also got a chance to interview, um, and it just it just is actually I think it's acting as sort of a, a magnet magnetizing force in a strange sort of way. Oh, that's I mean that, that's awesome. I'm I'm glad that that it's it's had that effect, and and it is kind of uh, it is kind of funny how that works out, you know. Especially even with the people you know I interview, just like you, you know, to kind of go back now after it was four years later, and to talk with you and and let you know what was going on and find out what's going on in your life and, and everybody else's who was in the who was in the film. It it's it's been a really, really exciting experience. And and but, you know, as far as that stamina is concerned, I think really people when they're looking to do something with their life, they're looking to make a change in their life, the major thing they need to do is find something that they're in, that they're passionate about, that they know that it, say Chris has this Chris Gloss has this quote in the movie that Find something to do, even if they don't, even if they're not going to pay you to do it, that you'd love to do. It's something you would do for free. Um, if that was all you could do, and you, you do it, did it for free, but you were going to be happy doing it, if you find something like that, it really it, it makes that stamina easy because you, you love what you're doing and you know it's what you're supposed to do. But if you're just chasing after something because it looks good or maybe the money is good, but you're not happy with it, it's going to be really difficult to keep that stamina going. Yeah, and that seems like to be an underlying theme of a lot of the, the real top-notch self-improvement um, people that, that know their know their stuff. Um, mm-hmm. They talk about that, too. And a lot of the interviews that you had on the movie have to do with, you know, finding your passion and your purpose outweighs so much else. Yeah. So um, that's something that's kind of a, sen- a, a, a theme that runs through a lot of this type of thing. And, I, and it kept cropping up within a lot of the interviews, too. And one of the other things, too, uh, is so many of the people you interviewed, their their purpose turned out to be something that affected and helped other people. Oh, yeah, and they went through, you know, going through tough times. Um, mm-hmm. you, you talked about in the movie, too, the concept of turning your um, tragedy into triumph. Yes. and Which is one of our, well, just so you know, both Casey and I, it's one of our favorite quotes. <laughs> okay. We love that. We love that Turning line, drama uh, into triumph. That's a big one for me. Turning, oh, we do have, yeah. I just want to let you know in advance, there's a two minutes, there's going to be a commercial break coming out so it doesn't clobber us upside the head like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Technical difficulty. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we, Dana Elfon, who was one of the people that we interviewed, um, she's a doctor. She just got through the residency. She just started her practice. And all of a sudden had, um, found out she had MS. And she actually got so bad that she was paralyzed and was stuck in a doctor's office, in a doctor's in a hospital for over a month, not being able to move her body. Um, she worked through it and through therapy, you know, was able to get back to you know a fairly functional state. But she could no longer be a doctor, and so she decided to become a health and wellness coach and help people with chronic illnesses like hers. And it's amazing that she looked at that process as something that was healthy and good, and that even though there was that tragedy, there was there was a purpose for her life that she learned because of what she went through. And so, you know, that that, that whole concept really does go yeah. throughout the movie. Um, the one minute to the commercial break, I really want to pick this topic up again after we come back, um, after the commercial interruption, I should say, uh, because that's, that's a huge deal to me, too, the whole turning your what looks like a negative, turning on its head and making it into something powerful in your life instead of letting it break you. So to me, talking about that after the break. <laughs> so they're gonna it's gonna be coming on right oh. about now. So oh, I definitely great. everyone Thank we will you. talk to Michael Cleary when we get back and be back in a minute. The World Talk Radio Variety Channel, where the world comes to talk. Your past does not dictate your future. Learn where this powerful message came from by picking up a copy of the inspirational book, 
Firewalker, written by author, speaker, and talk show host, Lyka Sean. Firewalker chronicles Lyka's experiences raised in the deep woods of Maine by a Czech immigrant who claimed to be touched by the hand of God and her journey to overcoming the fear and self-doubt that was thrust upon her for years. Pick up your copy of Firewalker now at BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. That's BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. Champions are born and losers are made. This is a powerful statement made by one of the world's top motivational speakers, John D. Lemmy. Clinically diagnosed as a stutterer at a young age, he was told he would never speak fluently, and yet, now, he is a world-renowned motivational speaker. Get the resources now you need in order to stay on top of your game. John D. Lemmy is giving away for free seven success motivational teachings. Go to www.selfempowermentsystems.com. That's www.selfempowermentsystems.com. The World Talk Radio Variety Channel. You are listening to Breaking the Limits. Your past does not dictate your future with Like a Sean. What would you do if you could overcome any obstacle in your life? Let's get back to today's exciting discussion. Here's Like a Sean. Welcome back to Breaking the Limits with Mike McCleary as my guest, who has created the movie Anything But Ordinary, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Lives. And I wanted to get right back into the topic, Mike, that we were talking about, which really had to do with turning trauma into triumph, which is one of my favorite sayings. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the people that you interviewed, myself included, have gone through some kind of trauma or some kind of, uh, and most people have at some point in their life, had to overcome a great deal of pain or something in their life that was not necessarily something even within their control, perhaps a bad childhood, who knows what, abuse. And uh, you can either let that beat you up and take you down, or you can turn it around and really create something amazing from the ashes, if you will. And um, you said you wanted to talk a little bit about my story. If you want to interview me a bit, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> sure, uh, that'd, be, that'd be great too. Okay. I mean, really, that was one of the, one of the uh, for people who don't know, um, your story is one of the stories that we featured, and it's featured in the perseverance section because we really felt uh, all the stories that we did in the movie were were put into different sections that we felt fit the most. And those four areas are change, perseverance, faith. And success, and yours definitely fit the perseverance um, portion of it. And I think one of the big things for you, uh, for people who don't know, I think you know, sharing a little bit about your childhood mm-hmm. and and going um, and getting out of the situation you were in it was a major area of perseverance. I mean, you talk about me having stamina. I think you really had a lot of stamina going through that process. I mean, that was well, well, for those that, that don't know, I actually was raised in a cult environment, so there was, I had to deal with uh, isolation and mind control and and from a very early age it's not something i picked as an adult and went into it's something that i grew up in from as long as i can remember until i was 21 actually so for me i actually had to kind of like remold who i was i felt like a little like kind of like an alien when i finally got out of there got out of the mix didn't you know like a, a subculture and here i'm in the, in this country of the free in a in a little slave camp buried in the woods in maine <laughs> So um, that's been quite a journey for me, and and a large part of everything that I do that's my passion um, and around the stuff that you interviewed me on has to do with trying to overcome what I first saw as my own inadequacies and fight my own fights, and I've had to deal with the medication issue. I've actually, by the way, I just finally went, the doctors that I've been seeing kept on telling me, you just need to be on antidepressants the rest of your life. It's just like having diabetes. You're just going to have to take it. And I finally, I went off of it about four months ago, finally. I weaned myself fully off of it. I have, I'm, I'm John Delemme is now my, my empowerment coach. Um, I, I'm, I have a lot of challenges ahead of me, and I've been dealing, but I also have a doctor that's helping with me with my nutrition and my naturopathic health as well. But um, So I'm still, of course, always going to be some degree battling those things, but it's how you do it, I think. It's how you, mm-hmm. how you see it. If you see it as another tool in your arsenal, like mm-hmm. every one of my stories can then be turned around and used. And I plan on writing, by the way, I also plan on writing another book, um, which is going to be called Breaking the Limits as well, which is going to be around the concept of what this show is also driving, which is people around um, breaking the limits that are set by other people for you. And I don't have it all quite figured out in my mind. I just have a basic concept swimming in there, which is all geared towards the same type of thing. 
Well, so good you're a great inspiration to me on that, the whole perseverance thing. So there's plenty of times when I've, I've hit the wall, especially dealing with um, coming off of antidepressants has some horrific side effects. And it can actually and make you worse for a while, too. But at the same time, if you see that light at the end of the tunnel and you realize, well, you know what, I'm not going to be a legal drug addict. I don't care what they, and that's a big capital, T-H-E-Y, you know, they say... Mm-hmm. It's always a they. This committee of they lives out there somewhere, but you can never see them face to face. It's like you can't face your accusers. But they say, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, what you should be, Definitely. what you are, what you can accomplish, what you can't accomplish. And it's, it's, an, it's this, this, this invisible wall that's been put up that's fictional. So um, I will get off my little soapbox now. It fired me up when I, I heard you talk about, and I'm using John's <laughs> fired up because <laughs> I hear him say that all the time now. Um, when you talked about going off your antidepressants, because that is that's a huge uh, dilemma in this country too. Is is it's just pop a pill, and it doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I do think there is a there is a purpose and a place for it. I do too. Um, I believe and, that you should. There's certainly absolutely. people that need it definitely, um, but there's also I, I think sometimes it gets too easy to do that, you know, and and that's not to say everybody should. Stop taking but No, I would. Know. I would. I want to maybe be very clear. I would never yeah, say exactly. that you should not listen to your doctor, but it, you should also also listen to the voice inside yourself and find out yeah. what's right for you. Because there was a definitely time I absolutely needed it, um, mm-hmm. but I also think that you should also look at other alternatives and options and what's right for your life. I totally totally agree with you. I went through the same process myself, and and uh, and really, uh, you know, what's cool too that we have in common is that. Uh, um, you really, because of the difficulties you went through and in, in leaving this environment and and being out with all these people that were, like you said, alien to you, um, you took up martial arts, you know, to build your mm-hmm. self confidence. And I did that in, in junior high. I was picked on a lot as a kid, and so my parents said, you know, you should you should take karate. And so I I was involved in martial arts for a number of years, uh, which really helped build my self confidence and and made me feel a lot better about myself. Yeah, I could actually not look people in the eye when I got out of there. I was literally scared of everybody. Um, I always thought everybody was looking at me. They're probably just doing their own thing, walking by, you know. But I was came from such a, a bizarre environment where I really was being scrutinized at every second, every spur, every reaction. You know, I had to fit into the what was considered the proper reaction. That I couldn't look people in the eye. So for me, that was a huge thing to, to actually physically do martial arts um, to help me with the with that. So that that definitely, and that's why I like the whole idea of black belt dreamer, which is to get your black belt in in protecting your dreams. It's a mental concept. Definitely, definitely, and 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 again, you know, like you were saying before too. It, it, what's cool is we all these people that I interviewed had some type of trauma in their life, and and some of the most successful people. You know, a lot of times I think we look at people that on the exterior look super successful, and that they're they're perfect. You know, we put like these big like. Uh, halos around people, with celebrities, and things like that, and think oh, yeah. all their life's perfect and everything's wonderful. But they're just what I found through this process was, no matter who you are, we all have a similar uh, life story. Our circumstances are different, but we go through the same things. No matter if you're super wealthy or if you're um, struggling to make it every day, we go through similar um, experiences and processes in our lives. And so, uh, I think when people realize that. We aren't so much different. To achieve and strive for something more becomes a lot easier. And one of the things I found, and I did a little stint in the entertainment industry for a while. I was doing the "I'm going to be a be a star" <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. I was in a few movies with a few big names. You know, I was I was a bit part, but I got to bump, you know, rub elbows with a few stars. And <laughs> I found myself looking for that secret pill, that's that magic wand that that they had. And I found a. I became so disappointed at first when I realized they were just people. And it's funny because, you know, you think that there's some secret magic trick that is going to make your life work that these people have under their belt. And they aren't. They're just, they're just regular people, and they happen to be in the spotlight. So that's one of the things I, I went full circle and realized I had to go all the way back to myself, which at first I was kind of pissed off. I don't know if I can say that on the air. <laughs> I was mad because I was like, what? You mean there's not, like, a secret a secret that I can find, and then it's all good. It's all I actually have to put, you know, some thought and work into it, and realize that it has to come from the inside of me. So that that was kind of a big deal for me to yeah. discover that perseverance. And I mean, there's nothing to replace um, 
perseverance, effort, and discipline. I know sometimes I'm the least disciplined person. Uh, I have my struggles with that from time to time. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a, key, a key item is that, that perseverance and that ability to get through, even when times look difficult. You know, you look around, at, especially in this country, it's, it, for those who are listening in the United States or North America or Europe, you know, we're so blessed with our wealth, even the people who are, um, who are some of the worst off, if you compare, you know, if you, if you go and compare it to what people live like in other parts of the world and in the underdeveloped world, we've got it all pretty lucky, you know, we're really mm-hmm. pretty blessed to be here doing what it is uh, with what we have. And when you start to realize how blessed you are and have some gratitude and, and be thankful for what it is that we have an opportunity to do uh, here in this country, um, it makes it a lot. It makes it a little bit easier. Not always a lot easier, but yeah. it makes it a little bit easier. And and not to take away from the pain anyone happens to be in in a certain part, place in their life, but I the, again, the, the part of what your movie's done is, is the perspective piece that's so important. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I lived in Arizona, I used to get up in the morning, and go for walks, and I'd be in a funk or a depression, and I and every so often I go out and there's this guy that he was in a wheelchair, so he was missing his legs. But he would be, every morning, he'd be out there just spinning around that fountain. And I'd be grumbling, oh, I'm tired, I can't you know, get up, do, do my morning walk before work. And I would get inspired every time I saw him, because here's this guy, he's bulleting around, you know, doing doing his thing. And and has he, he always appears to be in a good mood. And I'm complaining, because I don't want to get my, <laughs> sorry but out of bed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so much of it is perspective. And a lot of a lot of our guests in the movie really, you know, really talk about that subject. That, um, you know, looking at your perspective and looking at things differently, you know, can really can really change the way that uh, the way that you think. And that's what I love about two of these different stories, because some people come in and what well, you were asking, you know, a lot earlier. We were kind of talking about what some people's reactions were. One of the fun things with this movie is that there's these all these different characters and different people that are interviewed that there's somebody out there almost for everybody that they can latch on to and go, you know what, Here's I got an aha moment from this person. So it, that was one of the really exciting things. And, and I look at myself, too, as a culmination of all these different people I've, I've interviewed, and I have the opportunity to share their stories um, with other people and share the things that they've learned um, through the process of learning about them. So yeah, it, 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 it was really good point is that someone's someone's particular viewpoint and voice and the way they deliver might not strike a chord with certain people, but someone else's mm-hmm. might. It might be the same message, but it might not quite resonate with them unless it's spoken through a different vantage point. And that's what you've done together is bring all these different ones together so that there's kind of something for everyone in there, which is what I, I really like about it as well. We have about Thank two you. minutes till break, by the way. Well, and we 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 really tried to do that. And we know we're not going to, you know, we, you can't always make something that absolutely everybody is going mm-hmm. to love. But thankfully, I think we've, we haven't heard anybody yet who said, you know, this really wasn't worth my time. You know, <laughs> at the very least, <laughs> the very least, that critic I think section. <laughs> everybody who's seen it will come out of it with a new perspective in some way, shape, or form, um, whether they love the way that it was put together or anything like that. I mean, you know, no matter what movie you watch or see, there's going to be someone that loves it, someone who doesn't like it so much. And that's been a difficult thing for, you know, for us to do is to realize that uh, you can't always be everything for everybody and that every story is not going to resonate with everyone. But there are those, like you said, what's great is there's individual stories in there that any everybody is going to be able to latch on to somebody and get something out of that story. Yeah, and there's just there's just so many different viewpoints in there. Um, we have one minute break till break coming up. Um, so we will, I would definitely like to talk about a few more of your people that you have on this. Um, Candy G kind of fascinates me. You know, she's got from, from peanut butter to private jets, I believe is yes, the story. Exactly. Which, which the title itself is interesting. So when we get back from the break, um, I was hoping we could talk a little about her too. And there's quite a few people on there. We're not going to be able to fit 20 people in there. But um, <laughs> definitely also make sure that people have your links and your information. So we'll make sure to give that to everybody when we get back from this next break that is coming up right about now. World Talk Radio Variety Channel, where the world comes to listen. 
and talk. Your past does not dictate your future. Learn where this powerful message came from by picking up a copy of the inspirational book, Firewalker, written by author, speaker, and talk show host, Laika Sean. Firewalker chronicles Laika's experiences raised in the deep woods of Maine by a Czech immigrant who claimed to be touched by the hand of God and her journey to overcoming the fear and self-doubt that was thrust upon her for years. Pick up your copy of Firewalker now at BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. That's BreakingTheLimits.com slash Firewalker. Champions are born and losers are made. This is a powerful statement made by one of the world's top motivational speakers, John D. Lemmy. Clinically diagnosed as a stutterer at a young age, he was told he would never speak fluently. And yet, now, he is a world-renowned motivational speaker. Get the resources now you need in order to stay on top of your game. John D. Lemmy is giving away for free seven success motivational teachings. Go to www.selfempowermentsystems.com. That's www.selfempowermentsystems.com. Listen. Listen. The world is talking. The World Talk Radio Variety Channel. You are listening to Breaking the Limits. Your past does not dictate your future with Like a Sean. What would you do if you could overcome any obstacle in your life? Let's get back to today's exciting discussion. Here's Like a Sean. Hello and welcome back to Breaking the Limits with my guest, Mike McCleary. Uh, we were just talking about the different guests. You had 20 different people that you interviewed on your movie, Anything But Ordinary. And uh, I had mentioned uh, Candy G. She has an interesting story. She She's known for being called from peanut butter to private jets. She has quite a story, too. Did you want to talk about some of the people you interviewed? Oh, sure, definitely. And, you know, Candy G is a, is a great story as well. Um, it, it's interesting, too, how it relates the things that we do in our life, um, how they affect what it is that we want to do. I mean, our, our, I really do believe our thoughts really do um, have major impact in our life, whether you believe it's in a metaphysical way or a spiritual or religious way or just a motivational way. Um, our thoughts really do make a difference. And, and so when I went and interviewed Candy G, who her story is from peanut butter to private jets, essentially uh, a broke homeless mother, um, she was left with a four-month-old baby, Nothing else in the refrigerator but um, a jar of peanut butter. And she decided she, from that moment on she was going to apply all the success principles that she learned from uh, numerous people that she'd studied over the years. And if those principles worked, she was going to really um, show that they, that, that they were true and that they did work. And so she built a sales organization on the top, um, top percents in the, in the country. And now she travels around by private jets. So that's where kind of her story from peanut butter to private jets is concerned a great story of perseverance and, and overcoming difficult odds. Um, I, I love the story too because especially um, single women, single mothers who are in the crowd, I think can really relate to oh, her yeah. story. But when I interviewed her, my goal always has been was to be a public speaker to to go out and speak about um, these topics. And and so through my process of interviewing her, I became one of her uh, first trainers to actually go out and and share some of her message in the corporate. Environment, so it was it was kind of cool how that all how that all happened because I was making this movie that the opportunity to become a speaker was there, and and to to meet some of these amazing people. You know, on that uh, note, when I first when you did the interview with me uh, four years ago, you were very very different in the way you spoke, in the energy mm-hmm. levels, in in how you presented yourself. You were much more tentative, and now you're like powerhouse man. <laughs> <laughs> so you can okay. tell that you have definitely <laughs> developed that skill set. <laughs> well, you know, I, the, the inter- just the process of interviewing all these different people in different places really kind of creates that need to do that. And then now, now I'm also passionate about what I'm what I'm sharing. You know, then I was still learning all these different things, and and I really honestly now feel before I had a, I had a self confidence issue. Could I share what it is that I knew with people? And now I know um, that I can, and then I have a message that that resonates and that people should hear. So it, it makes it a lot easier. The belief uh, level. That's on. a strong belief level you have now that you exactly. don't think you really had before. Definitely. I definitely do. And, um, you know, another person I'd love to talk about, Chris Gloss, the Pasta oh, yeah. I know he's probably listening in right now. One of my favorites. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, Chris was a Hi, Chris. Was an awesome interview. Hi, Chris. <laughs> we love you. We love um, you. <laughs> um, Jessica King, another amazing, amazing person who uh, now she travels, has a foundation, and she's helping uh, children in India and Africa um, become more literate and believe in themselves. And it just again, this is where the, the whole four-year process. You you look back at where people were and the things that they're doing now. They're they're amazing. There's so many other people too in the movie. I really can't go over everyone, um, but if people do go to our website, um, they can find out more. There's biographies on all the cast, mm-hmm. uh, the crew, the musicians. I mean, that's something else. I mean, we were blessed. We had amazing independent um, artists, musicians who allowed us to use their music. People from all over the United States. One of uh, one of the individuals was from not individuals, but one of the bands was from uh, the United Kingdom called Blue October UK. They let us use some of their music. So it's just been an amazing, amazing journey, an amazing process to really show if you do believe in something enough, if you're willing to persevere enough, if you're willing to make those changes in your life and just believe in it and keep going after it, if you you know it's going to take time, that success will occur, and that success is finding that passion and purpose for your life. Well, just just the uh, the magnetism of the energy you project now, um, where you're not you don't have that uncertainty underlying at all. It's it, mm-hmm. it immediately will draw to you more as well, and and the interest and and you know people start sticking their head up over the desk, going, "Hmm, what's going on over there?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and, and it, it it takes that first step. You know, a, a lot of people. I, we we have a society now that you know this American Idol society, this reality TV show society that. Um, where we want everything now, we want everything, you know, or we want it yesterday, really, you know, and that you can go on TV and all of a sudden become the star and be the celebrity, you know, that we want everything mm-hmm. right now. But, but really, I think the true definition of success is to take that first step. You may not know where it's going to go. You may not know um, how it's going to come out, but by taking that step, other steps will come along in the process. Like you said, I was not a confident person talking about what I'm talking about now, but over the process of doing it over years, I've built that up. So, again, that's where you need to find something you're passionate about because then you'll be willing to stick with it. And that's just how brave you, know. you are, too, because it's when you're in that initial hesitant state of seeing something that you want to go for but you're not sure, that's where mm-hmm. you really are showing your mettle. I mean, to do that regardless of the fact that you don't know yet. I mean, now you can, like, you can you have all this under your belt. You're a powerhouse, but you started out before you even had that, and you kept going. So that's what I think is real perseverance, you know, one foot in front of the other on faith. So to, to me, that's a large definition of faith is, is, is you're moving towards that, even though you don't know yet. Oh, definitely. It, it definitely is. And, and I think, really, I've had an opportunity um, by persevering and, and, and flying through with this movie, I, I found out that I loved making movies. I mean, originally I didn't know that was something that I'd want to do. I wanted to speak. You know, I found that by telling these stories and making this movie, you've had this opportunity to share with people and, and do exactly that. But I found just the process of making films, mm-hmm. making movies, excites me. And I had no background originally, and I've just recently, I'm excited to say, um, I'm co-producing an independent film in the Detroit area. Awesome. With a great new friend. Uh, actually, a dramatic comedy, something totally different. Really? Than what, hmm? Really? A dramatic, a dramatic comedy? A dramatic comedy, something totally different than what I've done before, but um, I'm excited to do it because it's an area I, I eventually want to work towards. But that opportunity never would have come if I wouldn't have created this movie, got the experience, you know, learned through the process um, that now I'm doing other projects and producing other films. Yeah. It's you know, Wayne Dyer says, has this one phrase I like, which says, I'll see it when I believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wayne Dyer, he's one of the people I like to read his stuff. Um, he says, I'll, I'll see it when I believe it, instead of I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like that, that one. He has a lot of books out, and he's also a speaker as well. And he's someone that inspires me a great deal, too. Um, we have four minutes, unfortunately. I want, now I want to ask you all about your new movie, but um, I, what I'd like to do is make sure that everybody knows how to get hold of you and where they can get your movie. So if you want to go ahead and tell people what your website is, your email, all that good stuff. Sure, great. And, and one thing, too, I was really excited uh, when, I, when I heard Kami G's story and contacted her directly, and she, was, she actually answers her emails, and I'm the same way. So if someone sends me an email 
a real contact person. Contact me. I will actually get back with you. <laughs> Yay. You better, you better give it out now. I don't want them really to cut quick, us off. Uh, it's, our website is www.anythingbutordinary.net, and you can find me there as well. There's My phone number, my email is there. Um, and you can order the film there as well. It's currently um, up for pre-order. We're going to be getting the movies back um, the beginning of January. And yeah, we'll I want mine. <laughs> so pre-order the movie. And uh, shipping, if you order it before um, Christmas, is free. Oh, okay. So that's um, anything but net. Correct. Right, okay. Okay, well, they're going to they're gonna knock us off in two minutes here. So do you have anything you'd like to say as a closing commentary? You know, really, as a as a closing commentary, I, of course, uh, beyond getting people to come get the movie, um, I really do think if you do get a chance to see it, even if you don't buy it, if you find an opportunity, because we're going to eventually do a tour to, to take this message out there, come talk to us, come see us, but but see the movie, but hear these people's stories, go out and talk to other people, you know, find out what it is in your life that you would love to do, and if you don't know what it is, start a search, go out and find things that might excite you. Um, John calls it finding your why. It, exactly. It is. It's, it's finding your why. And it may not just hit you all of a sudden. It may be because you did a number of different things and found out you didn't like these, and you eventually mm-hmm. stumbled upon something. But it's finding that thing that you're passionate about, going after it, and not not giving in and, and quitting on it, but to keep going even when people think you're crazy <laughs> or that it doesn't <laughs> necessarily work. You know, you're going to have people who do that to you. Um, that aren't going to think your idea is great because it causes them to look at themselves in a different way and, and wonder why they're not doing the things they would love to do. Just go out and do it. Take some steps and learn along the way and have fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining the show. I hope I get a chance to interview on your next movie and your book, and gosh knows what else you're going to have out there soon. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been great. And like I said, it's like night and day talking to you today. Not that, not that you were so bad when I originally talked to you, but it's just like you're a different person almost. You really thank you, Laika, and so thank, thank you, your you audience. So much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks again for tuning in to Breaking the Limits. Please join Like a Sean for another program of inspiration next Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 Eastern, on the World Talk Radio Variety Channel. This week, never let what's happened in the past dictate what happens in your future. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the World Talk Radio Network. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit worldtalkradio.com. The World Talk Radio Network, where the world comes to talk. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of...